Tonight on Super Size vs Super Skinny, 22 and a half stone Joseph and 7 and a half stone Rebecca go head to head. You're joking, right? My face is not impressed. In Vegas, Dr. Christian sees the leftover consequences of obesity. And it weighed about half a stone, so not only is she going to be smoother and slimmer, she's also going to be lighter. And in the States, Joseph meets an internet sensation with a stark warning. The rest of my life is not really worth living. Obesity levels have more than doubled in the UK in the past 25 years. It's a growing epidemic with 61% of adults in England now overweight or obese. But at the other extreme, more than 1.2 million people in the UK are classed as underweight. Dr Christian is attempting to tackle the problem at both ends of the scale in his feeding clinic, as he exposes these super sizers and super skinnies to their opposites. Joseph, come on forward. Joseph, you are going to be paired with Rebecca. Wow, you are small. Yeah. I'm quite jealous that you've got bigger boobs than me. <laughs> what happened to your foot? I did it in a race, so I carried on and won. Oh, you battled through it? Yeah. Oh. I'm a bit stubborn. <laughs> so what kind of food do you eat? I kind of run off what I eat, but I have like chocolate cereal for breakfast. I like a lot of honey nut cereal. I do have like massive portions. I try not to fill the plate or the bowl, but it has been known to happen on a few occasions. That's what I was dreading. <laughs> <laughs> I'm three times the size of her. That's a big difference. I have a feeling Joe's portion sizes are gonna be about four times the size of mine. I'm quite scared. <laughs> Exercise junkie Rebecca has been burning off far more calories than she's consuming, and Joseph has been putting on a stone a year for the last 11 years. I'm hoping that their time in the feeding clinic will highlight exactly where they've been going wrong, and together they can help to turn their lives around. 36-year-old supersizer Joseph is an ex-policeman who tips the scales at 22 and a half stone. He's simply nutty about his favorite crunchy cereal. I normally get through one and a half kilos per week. Joseph always starts the day with an ample serving. Around about seven o'clock in the morning, I'd have honey nut cornflakes. I fill the bowl up to the top and then put a load of milk on. But by mid-morning, Joseph's ready for breakfast number two. At 10.30, maybe another bowl. In fact, he loves his breakfast cereal so much, he can't wait for the next morning to arrive. About 11 in the night time, another bowl. There's no preparation, there's no cooking. It's done within two minutes. Bowl, milk, that's it. Which is just how Joseph likes his food. Fast and easy. He's not one for actually cooking himself a proper meal. He can be a bit lazy. Joseph spends his days at home preparing for teacher training and six days out of seven succumbs to convenience food. I love pepperoni pizza. I put it in my mouth and it tastes so good. Before you actually know it, you're left with an empty box. A lot slimmer there, wasn't you? Evidence of his junk food intake has become impossible to disguise. First I started off at size 32 inch waist, now I'm up to like 48 and it's sort of, wow. Joseph first started to put on the pounds working shifts in the police. Now he's got so heavy, this extra weight is crushing his confidence. When I look in the mirror, I feel disgusted. It's just overdue that I sort of put a stop to this destructive feeling with food. Whilst Joseph feels compelled to eat everything in front of him, our super skinny has the opposite problem. 25-year-old rehabilitation assistant Rebecca is a fitness fanatic. I generally train six days a week. Sunday's a long run, Tuesday, Thursday's on the track. Friday's off, I don't ever run on a Friday. And Saturday's a session on the grass. Maybe I'm addicted to exercise. <laughs> Rebecca weighs in at seven and a half stone. In one run, she burns up to 1,000 calories and she's not eating enough to refuel her tiny tank. I generally drink squash, quite a lot of squash by the pint. 
I find that eating is more of a necessity and I don't think I particularly enjoy it. Lunchtime is generally the same thing, just two slices of bread, a bit of peanut butter. Then I'll have that every day until I run out of that pot of peanut butter and then I'll move on to what's next in the cupboard. Three years ago, Rebecca was diagnosed with the lung condition bronchiectasis, making her more vulnerable to infections, and it has resulted in her being hospitalised with pneumonia three times in three years. When it comes to her health, her weight does worry me because she doesn't have the reserves to help fight off the bugs. It could be fatal if I did get a really nasty infection. With a BMI of 16.6, Rebecca is seriously underweight. When I first had pneumonia, I was 23, and my mum told me that I had to get back to eight and a half stone before I was allowed to compete again, and I've never got back to eight stone. Rebecca's mum recently lost her battle with cancer, and Rebecca's determined to honour her wish. I would like to put the weight on, because my mum had wanted me to. Before our super skinny and super sizer enter the feeding clinic, Dr Christian wants to shock Joseph into realising where he's heading if he continues eating at his present rate. So he's sending him over to the USA. I'm feeling apprehensive about meeting someone who's going to be bigger than me. Joseph is heading for Fayetteville, Arkansas, where he'll be confronted with the health problems he could face if he doesn't change his ways. It's not going to be uh, a walk in the park. I know that it's going to be quite difficult at times. Joseph is about to meet Boogie, a supersized internet blogger. Boogie to 988 coming at you through the power of the internet. I'm uh, 39 years old and I'm about 37 and a half stone. Boogie readily admits that he's addicted to food. Food is the center of my universe. Yeah, when I'm eating food, I'm thinking about the next thing I'm eating or thinking about the thing I'll eat after that. As a consequence of his weight, Boogie suffers from diabetes, high blood pressure and arthritis. The back pain is now constant, the knee pain is now constant. My weight is destroying just about every aspect of my life. It's literally killing me. Three years ago, Boogie met Des online. They're now engaged to be married. I try not to think about the consequences of things don't change. In about two weeks, I'm getting married. Even though I know that I'm going to be in pain that day, I also know that it's going to be the best day of my life. You look so handsome. Since meeting Des, Boogie has lost nearly three stone, but it's been a daily battle. My original goal was to be able to dance with my wife at our wedding, and I don't think I'm going to be capable of that. I'm going to feel lucky if I can stand through the 15-minute ceremony. It breaks my heart. So what will 22 and a half stone Joseph make of 37 and a half stone Boogie? Hey, nice to meet you. How you doing? John? Boogie. Okay. No, yeah, no, yeah, nice to meet you. I've paired Joseph and Boogie because Joseph is really on a slippery slope downwards. His eating is completely out of control. Boogie, despite all the humor, he's really not happy. And I think he's just the man to tell Joseph not to slide any further down that slope. If you don't mind me asking, how much do you weigh and how much have you weighed? I am 37 and a half stone today. And my biggest was 42 and a half. Weight loss for me has been a real struggle. And I can only imagine it's a struggle for you two. You have to determine who you're going to be. And if you're going to be a man of size, own it. But I don't recommend it, man. My body is starting to fail, the arthritis. You have a chance here to stop yourself from beginning to die early. After hitting Joseph with the harsh reality of his health problems, Boogie wants to share the lighter side of his life. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Boogie to 988 coming at you live once again. Boogie makes his living from internet videos. He entertains over 750,000 followers with comedy sketches and observations of what it's like living with obesity. But putting himself online has also made him an easy target for abuse. I had a guy tell me, you're too fat to be on the internet. Kill yourself now rather than die of a heart attack or a stroke. Uh, it's, it's, it's disgusting that people would even say that sort of stuff. I just can't believe how upbeat and funny he is. I think it's a, a coping mechanism and it's, it's a real eye-opener. I don't want to end up dying five years' time due to my weight being an issue. Coming up, Joseph gets a shocking glimpse of what his future could be. The rest of my life is not really worth living. 
Back home in the feeding clinic, Rebecca gets stuck in. It's not really a surprise he put on a lot of weight if he's eaten that regularly. And Dr. Christian gives Joseph some shock treatment. That is a month's worth of your cereal. It's disgusting. Thirty-six-year-old supersizer Joseph is a cereal snacker with a weakness for fast food. Weighing in at 22 and a half stone, he's nine stone overweight. So Dr. Christian has sent him to the USA to meet 37 and a half stone internet blogger Boogie to show him how he could end up if he doesn't curb his appetite. It's lunchtime and Boogie's taking Joseph to one of his favorite diners. Oh, wait till you see the problem they got in here. Trust me, it's awesome. Oh, brilliant. Meanwhile, Dr. Christian is on his way to pay them an unannounced visit. I've just driven past the diner where they're both sitting, so I'm going to get out and surprise them now. How are you, Bob? Bonding over food, Boogie's keen for Joseph to try one of the restaurant's speciality dishes. Processed meat wrapped in pancakes, fried and served with two eggs and maple syrup coming in at around 1,200 calories a dish. Uh, meat and sweet, mm. just the best feeling for me in the world. It's my favorite food. That's good, you have to try this. Oh. Mm. It does taste so good, but you can tell that it's so bad for you. Mm -hmm. Here's your drink, sir. I'm Water for you, Coke for you. Pretty good, thank how you. How are you doing? Yeah, good. <laughs> how oh, are you? God. <laughs> I don't know how good an influence you are when it comes to food, though, Boogie. I picked literally the worst thing on the menu. For me, food is not only a way to reward myself, but a way to punish myself. You know, food is the punctuation that I put at the end of every sentence in my life, you know? On, Dr. Christian wants to make sure that Joseph fully understands Boogie's health issues, so they head home for a serious chat. You want to see medical conditions? My basket of uh, medicine that I take every day just to get through the day is right here next to that fridge. So aspirin for pain, arthritis, but also thinning the blood. Blood yep. Ibuprofen. Pain medication, I'm in constant pain. Even now they're giving me steroid shots, cortisone, just to reduce the inflammation so that I can still walk. I wanted to show you what my legs look like. If I just push my finger into his leg like this, what I'm actually doing is squeezing fluid out. When I let go, I've left him a nice little dent in his leg. And there's something called lymphedema. His, his drainage systems to his legs are not really working properly. My quality of life is so poor. I mean, I'm very blessed with my job and I'm very blessed with my fiance, but when it comes to being in pain all of the time, the rest of my life, no matter how short or long it is, is not really worth living. Are you noticing problems like this? Late at night when I'm in bed, I sometimes uh, get a lot of muscle pain in my legs and it really does hurt. 
the things you're describing right now are exactly what I was experiencing. You can chug along quite nicely for quite a long time, ignoring all the little clues, but then when the problems start, they pile on thick and they pile on fast. So now, Joe, promise me you've got this. Well, I've got this, man. I've got this. You prove to me that you can do this, you're proving that you, I can do this, okay? Your success is my success now. You owe this to me. I feel that kind of made it a wake up call and made me see that, you know, this is my last chance to actually do something about my weight. That's what a lot of this journey is gonna boil down to for you is actually finally being honest with yourself. Is that fair? It's not just the fact that I put on the weight, it's the fact that I've been lying to myself as to the reasons why I put on the weight. No more excuses, I'm gonna do it now. Thank you, Dr. See Christian. you back in the UK, Josie. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye. bye. Back on home turf and it's time for Joseph and Rebecca to check themselves into the feeding clinic where for two intense days they'll swap their terrible diets. I'm going to come in quite hard on you straight away. The numbers in your food diary just do not add up. I tend to binge eat and have erratic eating patterns rather than having preset meals. Because of your Pakistani heritage, your ethnicity means that your risks of developing certain conditions are higher than Caucasian man. Okay. People with a South Asian background are more at risk of developing coronary heart disease and can be up to six times more likely to develop diabetes. I'm 36 now and I haven't got diabetes. I've been like this for 10, 12 years. So what are you going to do? Wait till you get it and then do something about it? Well... I kind of fool myself into thinking, well, I haven't got it yet, so I'm fine. Tell me, what's going to be your main sort of motivators? I'm doing it for me. But I think that's a good answer. Do it for you. Yeah. Best of luck with it. Nice to see you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Cheers. Seven and a half stone fitness fanatic Rebecca uses up so many calories in exercise, she's literally running on empty. She needs to top up with an additional 1,000 calories a day. Which is more important to you, running or food? At the minute, running, it should be both. With you, because of your running, your metabolism is sky high. And you may burn 500 calories on a run, but that will keep going for four to six hours after you finish that run. So you need to be fueling yourself all that time. Otherwise, you're constantly running on a deficit. And where's your body going to get the calories from? It's going to come from you. Rebecca's lack of calories is also not helping her lung condition, which has led to frequent hospital admissions. Why do you want to gain this weight? Who do you want to do this for? My mum. <laughs> My mum wanted me to get dirty and I was told and I haven't done it and now she's passed away. Why was she worried about your weight? Because she'd seen it go down and I was in and out of hospital quite a lot. Yeah. So I know it's upsetting when you talk about that. In fact, I'm feeling bad, so I'm going to give you, going to give you a snotty old tissue. I haven't used it, I promise I haven't used it. But there's lots and lots and lots of reasons why you need to do this now, aren't there? OK, it's good to see you. Good luck. It's time for Super Size and Super Skinny to start the diet swap. First up, breakfast and cereal addict Joseph is going cold turkey whilst Rebecca's getting his usual massive serving of cereal with milk, followed by three slices of thick buttered toast, and to wash it down, a pint of sugar-free cola. Enjoy. Thanks. I'll enjoy watching you. <laughs> Joseph is getting nothing, not even a drink. Is this what you normally have for breakfast? I sometimes have, like, chocolate cereal. See, but there I is know. days that I don't bother to have breakfast. Rebecca makes a start on her huge bowl of cereal. It's like half the box of cereal. It's probably about twice as much as what they say that you should have in one serving. And when I actually have breakfast, it's probably a quarter of the amount of this. How are you feeling? Hungry. I think I'm done for cereal. <laughs> After beating the seemingly bottomless bowl, Rebecca moves on to the second course. This is fun. <laughs> You've hit that wall, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a good feeling to see someone else with so much in front of them, knowing that that's how much I would eat. Yum. I'm not looking forward to lunch at all. And that's a pity. 
because Rebecca's about to be treated to one of Joseph's favorite meals. Three pieces of southern fried chicken, a large portion of chips, bread and butter, and a pint of cola. For dessert, a bowl of peanut chocolates, followed by a chocolate bar chaser. Versus a small chicken breast and 10 chips. Well, at least I'll get something to eat this time. I'm gonna be eating this really slow. Although Rebecca is faced with an unhealthy meal, it should make her understand that she needs to eat more. The last two. Where are you getting all your energy from to run? Okay. But your body's got to be burning the calories from somewhere. Because the only other place that your body could be getting it from is them breaking down the muscles. My legs have got skinnier. I can't sprint anymore. I can pretend, but it doesn't happen. Overfaced by the fried food, Rebecca heads for dessert. You'll find it easier if you pick up a handful. A proper handful. A proper handful. <laughs> By the way, I was only joking about it. <laughs> I didn't think that she would do it, but when she did, it was quite hilarious. I don't think she enjoyed it too much. It's not really a surprise he put on a lot of weight if he's eating that regularly. Do you think eating my mammoth meals are harder than running 10 miles? <laughs> Somebody told me longer than running 10 miles to <laughs> eat this. I thought it would be really easy and I could just demolish all the plates, it'll be fine. It's not. I'm done. Joseph is seriously underestimating just how much food he's eating, so Dr Christian's stepping in with some shock tactics. That is a month's worth of your cereal, Joseph. Four kilos of cereal a week, 18 kilos a month. It's disgusting. A third by weight is sugar. So let's add six kilos of sugar. In a year, this supersizer eats over a thousand bowls of cereal. It mounts up to a sickeningly sweet 72 kilos of sugar. But that's not the only additive lacing his favourite snack. There's an awful lot of salt in this cereal. Joseph gets his recommended daily allowance of six grams of salt just from his cereal consumption alone. One of your size bowls is about 800 calories. I'm lost for words. And by adding milk, Joseph's cereal snack mounts up to almost 1,000 calories. A single bowl holds almost 40% of his recommended daily calorie allowance. 91 bowls is 91,000 calories a month. I'm actually feeling kind of sick. If you were just to cut four bowls a week, you'd start to lose a pound of weight a week. And if that's not reason enough for Joseph to step away from the cereal, Dr Christian's got another shock up his sleeve. That is a normal femur, normal adult femur. That one looks a bit odd, doesn't it? This is a disease called rickets. And one of the causes of rickets is vitamin D deficiency. If you don't have enough vitamin D, they sort of become bendy. That's a person with rickets. So with a gradual softening of the bones, plus the pressure of their body weight on top, and their leg bones have just gradually bent. That's really nasty. But most people make enough vitamin D by being exposed to sunlight. But you can top up your levels by eating oily fish and eggs. I can almost certainly guarantee that you will be deficient in vitamin D. Oh, OK. <laughs> Change your diet, go outside, do a bit of exercise, and actually, you can top your vitamin D levels back up. I now know where my weight gain has been, and it's been by eating oversized bowls of cereal. I won't be touching another cereal box again. So far, all cereal addict Joseph has eaten is a child-sized serving of chicken and chips. On the menu tonight is an apple and a banana. For Rebecca, it's stuffed crust pizza, dripping in cheese and smothered with Joseph's favourite topping, pepperoni. Do I have to eat the pepperoni? Put some meat on that bones. <laughs> Yummy, eh? No. How many calories do you reckon is in this pizza? Around about 1,300, 1,400. Joseph is completely underestimating his calorie consumption. 
This pizza alone would take him over his recommended daily allowance. It contains a colossal 2,690 calories. He definitely like giant size things. It makes more economical sense to buy a larger one. Would you not buy a bigger one and eat half for dinner and then have the rest of the next day? That's the idea. I think Joe's in denial about how much he actually eats. There's just no willpower. If it's there, I think he eats it. It takes Rebecca over an hour to work her way round the pizza, skirting the crusts and the topping. If that was me, it'd probably be gone in 10, 15 minutes. That's really quick to eat a pizza this size. Yeah, I know. It does kind of show me that if I eat slower, that I will get fuller quicker. <sighs> and she's done it. <laughs> this just goes to show that you can eat bigger portions. Yeah, I probably should eat a bit more when I get in than fruit. Her dinner ordeal might be over, but it's midnight and that means it's snack time. Yeah, Becca, it's Joe. I've got some more food for you. Great. Another bowl brimming over with sugary cereal. You love your cereal. At all times. At stupid o'clock. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Good night. I'm defeated by honey nut cornflakes. Coming up, Dr. Christian's in Las Vegas, witnessing the radical tummy tucks needed to get rid of the physical consequences of extreme weight loss. It weighed about half a stone, so not only is she going to be smoother and slimmer, she's also going to be lighter. Joseph's mammoth meals get the better of Rebecca. I actually feel really sick now. I'm going to get some fresh air. And Emma Wolf meets an Ironman world champion to find out more about the link between eating disorders and professional athletes. You have in your mind your idea of what perfection is, and that can be quite warped. <laughs>America, when it comes to obesity, Sin City certainly lives up to its name. Las Vegas has shockingly high rates of obesity, fast food consumption, and is rapidly becoming a bariatric surgery capital. Over 150,000 Americans have bariatric surgery every year, with a cost to the US health economy of one billion pounds. But as more and more people undergo radical surgery to lose the weight, many are left with unsightly excess skin.
Dr. Shah, a cosmetic surgeon in Las Vegas, has seen a 200% rise over the past 10 years in patients desperate for skin removal. The number of patients that we're seeing is on, on the rise because we have a big problem, as you know, in the United States. More people are gaining weight, they, they are going through the bariatric procedures to yeah. help them lose the weight. Once they lose the weight, they have all that extra skin and they have to do something about it. There's a danger that the, the, all this excess skin might put people off losing the weight in the first place. Um, you know, I think it's more important about your health. I think it's better to lose the weight and live with the extra skin. 37-year-old Melanie used to weigh over 24 stone. Six years ago, she had a gastric band fitted, which enabled her to lose nearly half her body weight. This is all the extra skin that she has after losing all the weight. And what we're going to do is we're going to take out all the extra skin from the top, the bottom, mm -hmm. and tighten it up. You can say goodbye to all of this. Abdominoplasty, or tummy tucks as they're more commonly known, are the third most popular cosmetic surgery procedure in the USA. Why are you having this done? I mean, I presume it's because of weight loss? I've lost over 11 stone. And now it's just a lot of skin that's hanging and it's uncomfortable, my clothes don't fit right. So it's time to go to the next level. Invasive procedures like this can take up to six hours to complete. The surgery involves tunneling up underneath the abdominal wall all the way up to about here. Dr. Shah will loosen all the skin away from the flesh so he can stretch it, pull it down tight and join it together. It's sort of like very, very skillful dressmaking. Despite Melanie losing the weight, she still has a lot of fat deposit, which Dr. Shah sucks out. He can then tighten up her abdominal muscles to give a nice firm stomach. One important part of this operation is keeping the tummy button in the same place. So when he pulls all the new skin down over the top, it can poke through, be sewn into place and look normal. Dr. Shah's cut two large sections, one from each side of Melanie's abdomen. So the bulk of excess skin has now been removed and it weighed about half a stone. So not only is she going to be smoother and slimmer, she's also going to be lighter. It takes about two months to make a full recovery from this kind of major surgery. It's been six weeks and Melanie's feeling great. She may have the body she wants, but the rise in surgical answers to obesity and its complications seems a high price to pay for weight loss when healthy eating and exercise are a more effective solution. It's day two of the feeding clinic and Rebecca's facing another mountainous serving. Not a massive sausage fan. This time a full English breakfast, two sausages, three rashes of bacon, two fried eggs, beans, two slices of toast, and a quarter pound burger. After yesterday's absent breakfast, Joseph struck lucky. He's getting a small serving of chocolate cereal and milk. Do you have to eat the fatty bits of the bacon yes. as well? Oh. Once again, Rebecca's in for the long haul. That's pretty grim. <laughs> Each mouthful is a struggle. That's Megan. But she refuses to give up. That's nearly an hour <laughs> it's taking you to eat that so far. Does that make you realise how big the portion is? It's made me realise how slow of an mm. eater you are rather than how big of a portion it is. I'm done. I don't want to sniff that meat anymore. <laughs> it's just making me think that maybe the sizes that I eat are too big. With Joseph finally starting to see the error of his ways, Dr. Christian wants to remind them both why they're here. <laughs> I must have been about five or six at the time. Yeah, I was always quite active, always going out during playtime. Loved the hair. <laughs> Wish I still had that. Have a bowl. This one was taken about 95. I was about 18. Um, you can tell in my face how skinny yeah. I was. Uh, uh, 98, just joined the police. Is that was, when the shift work started? I'd eat two, three o'clock in the morning. At that sort of time, places that were only open were, you know, donut places, bagel places. Stereotypical PC. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. I think that once I lose the weight, I will go back to being a lot more like the fun, loving guy that I was 15 years ago. Rebecca's had a difficult two years since being diagnosed with the lung condition bronchiectasis. It 
could be fatal if I did get a really nasty infection. Her lung condition combined with her unhealthy diet worries her dad, who has written her a heartfelt letter. Hi Rex, the past couple of years have been particularly challenging for you. Do you want me to read it for you? You have always faced your challenges head on and even when you were at your lowest, you never gave in. You are an inspiration with your determination to get your fitness back each time you have been ill. Mum and I always used to say you were special. Go get them, Tiger. Dad, how long have you been unwell? Um, the last two years. But that mixed in with my mum. Passed away in April. When my mum was in a hospital. If it wasn't for my friends, I probably wouldn't have bothered to eat anything. I kind of felt that it was selfish to leave her to go and have dinner. You gave something up and then. Hopefully you'll be able to make true to that promise that you made to your mum. Encouraged by emotional reminders of why they've come to the feeding clinic, Rebecca and Joseph are ready to take on lunch. You're joking, right? My face is not impressed. <laughs> All Joseph gets is a single banana. Versus two Cornish pasties, a bowl of cereal, a mound of dark chocolate, and a pint of Diet Cola. There is carrot in here. It's got all your basic food groups there. I don't think it counts as a balanced diet, though. <laughs> Do you really think that this is enough to sustain you? No. You need to up your calories and mm. have better food. A banana isn't lunch, it's just a snack. Me and Joe are quite similar in that we're lazy and you just eat what's quick and easy or convenient. But if you eat all of this on a regular basis, it's just nothing good going into your body. Oh my God. Despite her determination, Rebecca only manages to get through one and a half pasties before she skips straight to dessert. How does it taste? I actually feel really sick now. Can I go and get some fresh air? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Plowing through Joseph's mammoth meals finally catches up with her. Was it the Cornish pasty or was it the chocolate? I think the mixture. My heart did kind of go out to her. I did feel sorry for her. Oh. It woke me up to the fact that I am eating well over the amount of food that I should be eating. <sighs> Although lunch made her feel ill, Rebecca's not about to give in. It's the final challenge, the last supper. Cereal with your dinner. Accompanying tonight's mountain of cereal is a towering takeaway. A doner kebab and a large portion of chips, plus a two-litre bottle of Diet Cola. Joseph's sitting down to a healthy stir-fry of noodles and crisp vegetables. Enjoy. It's an education on a plate. Is this uh, an aubergine? No, it's a courgette. <laughs> I'm actually quite liking this. Have I converted you? This is probably more of the colourful food that I need to be eating. I think I've just eaten beige for three days. Do you think you're going to eat any of the meat? If I had the choice, I wouldn't go anywhere near it. Seeing Rebecca struggle slowly through his meals has made Joseph realise where he's been going wrong. Even though that I'm hungry and I want to just wolf it down, I'm kind of forcing myself to chew. I'm looking at that now and I'm thinking, I don't think I'll be able to go through it. I'm not going to lie, when I came in, I didn't realise someone could put away quite so much. I've learned that I eat way too much and I need to sort out my portion control. With you, your portions need to be bigger. Yeah. And not eat and during the night. And cereal doesn't go with every meal. <laughs> no. After an intense two days, their time in the feeding clinic has come to an end. One more very important thing I need to do, and that's give you your healthy eating plans for the road ahead. So Rebecca, this one is yours. Joseph, this one is yours. Joseph needs to reduce his calorie intake to 2,000 a day. His diet of sugary cereal will be replaced by a whole grain breakfast option and he'll introduce high fibre foods to keep him fuller for longer. 
Because of her exercise regime, Rebecca needs to up her daily calories to 2,650. She's starting a strict regime of three meals a day, plus energy-dense snacks like dried fruit and nuts. I'm looking forward to going back home, reading the diet plan, be more mindful and less mindless about food. I'm quite determined that food is going to be number one on my priority list. Hopefully, I can turn a corner. Joseph and Rebecca will be back in three months' time when Dr. Christian will be monitoring their progress. Take care. Have fun, anyway. Good luck. You too. We'll find out later how they got on. Journalist and author Emma Wolfe suffered from anorexia for many years. Last week, she met two young women whose desires to pursue professional careers in dance and sport were wrecked by anorexia. My fencing coach sat me down and he said, I think you've got a problem. My ambition was to become a professional dancer. I turned that into, I must lose weight. Tonight, she continues her investigation in Liverpool, where she's meeting Professor Andy Smith from Edgehill University. His research involved interviewing athletes about their experiences of elite sport, one aspect of which was their relationship with food. Three, two, one. The university-funded study took place over two years and involved 32 elite sports people. So Andy, are sports professionals more prone to getting eating disorders? On the basis of our evidence, we would generally conclude yes. And that can range from um, weight-dependent sports through to lean-dependent sports like gymnastics and so on. Is there something in that high achieving personality? All of the athletes to whom we spoke, whether they were a young 16 year old up to somebody who would retired at the age of 34, said that one of the central characteristics of being an elite athlete is almost having an addictive personality to perfectionism and that fear of failure without doubt. At the Olympic level, are there more eating disorders mm. than lower down at amateur level? Prevalence rates in Olympic athletes have been reported up to 62%. But 62% is astonishingly high. And why is that? Certainly from our research, it's the pressure on individual athletes not just to succeed in the forms of winning medals, but also simply to qualify in some cases for Olympic. Chrissy Wellington is a British triathlete and four times World Ironman champion. She is also a recovered bulimic and anorexic. I first realised that I had an eating disorder when I was aged about 17. I was still living at home, I was studying at sixth form and I started making myself sick as a way of controlling my weight and my body image. Striving for physical perfection, Chrissy used exercise to lose more weight. Her eating disorder continued for several years. Before I knew it, I'd started to lose weight, and once I'd lost weight, I wanted to lose more, being quite an obsessive perfectionist. Chrissy's experiences tally with Professor Smith's findings that some of the qualities found in a competitive athlete can make a person more vulnerable to eating disorders. Emma wants to find out more. Athletes will seek to control every aspect of their training if they want to perform to their best, and that includes controlling what they put in their mouths. You have in your mind your idea of what perfection is, and that can be quite warped, <laughs> in some cases quite irrational, but it's also a moving feast because you never achieve perfection. When you reach one point, you always want to, to better it. Did anyone know you had a problem? I went to see a prospective coach and he took one look at me and he said, you've had an eating disorder. How did he know? He could just tell in um, my upper body structure. I had downy hair on my body, I had trouble sleeping. And all of those things he knew from his own experiences in dealing with female athletes. And I was fortunate that he recognised that in me and that he then gave me the support I needed to be able to overcome the problem. And has your performance improved since you started eating properly? Overcoming the eating disorder enabled me to achieve my potential. And you can get to a point where you can be happy with yourself outside and in, and that's a really great place to be. And whilst research suggests a prevalence of eating disorders amongst athletes, there is hope. Meeting Chrissy shows that with the right help and support, you can recover and return to your sport. If you want more information or support about eating disorders and sport, please go to uksport.gov.uk. 
or visit channel4.com forward slash supersize. Coming up, we'll find out if Rebecca and Joseph have stuck to their plans and left their unhealthy habits behind. Do you think you've put on any? I hope. It's been three months since serial addict Joseph and fitness fanatic Rebecca left the feeding clinic. It's time to see if they've managed to change their unhealthy ways. I'm really nervous today. I want to lose 14 pound and anything more than 14 pound would be great. Really hope that I've uh, achieved that today. I really want to put on weight, but I don't know if I actually have. I feel like I've been eating for England in the hope that I will have. And I have been eating a lot more than I did before, so hopefully I'll put on a little bit. Joseph, what sort of changes have you made? Since I left the house, um, I've, I haven't had any um, honey nut cornflakes. The honey nut cornflake man, you haven't had any? Not no, once? Not once. It really did put me off. Boredom eating was, I think, a real issue for you, wasn't it? Yeah. How did you manage to tackle that? I'm not bored anymore. Um, so I don't, I don't eat out of boredom. I now walk Good. about three and a half, four miles a day. Excellent. So yeah, it's a big, uh, big positive step for me. And is this something you're going to keep up now? Is this you for good? I've realised that this is a lifestyle change. It's not a fad diet. It's not something that I'm only going to do temporarily. Um, and I'm quite enjoying doing it. Rebecca, how did things go since you left the feeding clinic? It's been going good. I've been like eating meals and snacking. Meals, whole I know, meals. Whole wow. Meals. Okay, big changes. And running, did that improve? I felt stronger when running, which I haven't for a very long time. Do you think you're getting that balance a bit better now between the amount of exercise you were doing and the amount of food that you were not eating? Yeah. I don't feel like I'm running on empty. Now I'll eat before I train. I feel a lot better for it. Funny that, isn't yeah. it? But then you did suffer a real blow, I know, didn't you? Yeah. You got pneumonia, you were hospitalised. Yeah. So I presume, unfortunately, you did lose a bit of the weight yeah. at that time. It fell off quite quickly. I didn't really eat when I was in hospital. Oh, so you had pneumonia, a horrible, horrible, yeah. serious illness, actually. But the important thing, actually, is do you think you've now picked yourself back up again? Yeah. I'm hoping with you, though, is that as a result of these changes in the future, when you do get the pneumonia, it'll be a less severe. Okay. 
time for Joseph and Rebecca to be reunited. How are you doing? You're looking really good. Wow. You can tell you've lost a lot. You can tell you put a bit of weight on as well, yeah. You can kind of see it in your face there. Got some cheeks. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Please tell me you're giving up the honey nut cornflakes. I have totally no pizza, no doner kebab. Oh my goodness. Uh, chips have more or less gone out of the window. Wow, like a new you. It's like the older me, older me from like yeah. 10, 12, 15 years ago, yeah. I've become more, more happy. What about yourself? My family keep wanting to take me out for dinner because <laughs> I can eat a portion now <laughs> and don't take forever to eat it. Oh, that's brilliant. Hello, gang, my favourite bit. How are you both? Good. Oh. Rebecca, ladies first, we're going to start with you, all right, because I know you're particularly nervous about this, aren't you? Things were going really well, weren't they? Do you think you put on any weight initially before the pneumonia? Definitely, I had put on a few pounds. A few pounds? Yeah. And then the blow, the pneumonia struck you, and I was devastated for yeah. you, actually, because I knew what a blow to your confidence that would be. And you think you lost weight? Yeah. And now? I really don't know how much I've put on. Do you think you've put on any? I hope. You have. You've put on a spectacular five pounds oh, in weight, so. including having a two-week <laughs> hospital stay for pneumonia. So you have done well, my girl. You've done very well. Are you pleased? Definitely. I was expecting a pound at tops. <laughs> Joseph, I know you set yourself a target, didn't you? Yes. To have reached by this point. What was it? To lose one stone. Oh, Joseph, really? Well, you haven't done a stone, but it's not less, it's more. You've done one stone, two pounds. Yes, I'm really happy with that. You've lost four inches around your man boobs. Wow. And around your middle, around your tummy, you've lost five and a half inches. Time wow. for a new pair of jeans, I suspect, yeah, you? Yeah, definitely. You've got colour in your cheeks. You've actually got a smile on your face as I well. Know. You feel proud of yourself, and so you should, because you've done really, really well. Both of you have. I'm delighted. Thank you. Now I know I can put on five pounds when I've come out of hospital a couple of weeks ago. I know I can definitely put on a lot more weight and be normal. I feel a lot more confident in myself, happier. This is my lifestyle from now on. I just feel on top of the world. It's just a great feeling. I'm quite excited. <laughs> this is the way forward. If you are interested in taking part in a future series of Super Size vs Super Skinny, please go to channel4.com forward slash take part to find out how. Next time... Are you ever hungry? Emotions run high as 35 stone Michael and super skinny Sam have their diets challenged in the feeding clinic. That there is a year's worth of your crisps. We meet a young man who successfully kicked back against anorexia. Life excites me now, come and get me. And our super sizer gets some stateside shock treatment. This is absolutely one of the worst ways to live your life. I can't take my son to a baseball game.